Okay, we'll start from the beginning. My name is Julio Alonso, I'm the director for Wines of Chile USA. Um, it's a really a great pleasure to be hosting this um, tasting this afternoon, a deep dive into Chile's sustainability uh, credentials. Wines of Chile is a um, trade association, a nonprofit trade association that gathers the producers of wine down in Chile and all related industries. We have uh, offices around the world. We have offices in Asia, the one I was uh, created in 2014 and in, in China. We have UK, Brazil, Canada, and we have our office here in the US based in New York. Um, this year we have been pushing our credentials in sustainability. Uh, we believe we have great inside information, great advantages, great competitive advantages as well, and great stories to tell you guys. Um, I hope we can go deeper and deep, deep and deep this, this afternoon. Um, and we launched this Sustainability 365 campaign on April 22 for the Earth Day, um, and, and, and a campaign that it's underlying and communicating the effort that our winemakers uh, does every day of the year to push uh, the sustainability side of the wine. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be in this in this tasting. Um, we have to today on our side, our great friend, Brett Zimmerman from Colorado. Um, hi, Brett, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Very well, uh, what do you have in your back? I've got, I've got the, uh, the Andes in the background. Looks like you got a horse for, for your background, which I'm like. I, ha I have a <laughs> horse from, from Maule. It's a horse and then you can see Perfect. the viticulturalist is there just on the side. Well, thank Perfect. you very much for joining us, Brett. Uh, we're, really, we're really lucky we have you here, have you, having you here. Um, Brett Zimmerman, it's a master sommelier and he's the, also the owner of Boulder Wine Merchants in Colorado uh, with a great commitment and vision in sustainability terms. And well, he will um, you know, guide us today through these beautiful wines and the secrets of Chile. So Brett, take it from there. Welcome and thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. And it's, uh, it's been a great pleasure to be along with the, uh, with the whole program for the last five of these, uh, these sessions. And uh, as we were just discussing moments ago, um with the uh, with the team here I, it's it's been a, a tremendous learning experience for me as well having the opportunity to talk to all these amazing producers and winery representatives is truly a treat um it is true i am focused on sustainability in a variety of different ways i've got my own <clears throat> website and podcast that we've been doing um, that we started in august called the sustainable psalm um, and you know similar to 365 our mission is to inspire the consumer and the industry change uh, when it comes to industry you know environmental health issues and impacts uh, in some of the uh, the right the regions and the in the soils and the water and all the resources that we use for uh, wine production so uh, we do a lot also with uh, um, looking into wines and soils that are affected by the use of pesticides and herbicides and plastic residues and heavy metals and all the nasty stuff that you don't want in your uh, wine beverages there. So my mission is very much in line with uh, this this mission for Sustainability 365, um, and it's great to be a part of this thing. So um, I do have to thank, uh, once again, the, uh, the team from Colangelo. Uh, Sarah, Amanda, Lisa, everybody that has uh, done so much to to make the organization of this take place and uh, to get all the wines to you people for uh, for tasting and coordinating with all the the producers. Julio certainly involved with all of that, um, and thank you very much for having me. Um, just in terms of the uh, the breakdown today, we have you know it's, we do have uh, five wines to uh, to enjoy and an overview of sustainability. We're going to try to get a little bit deeper into some of the. Uh, discussion than we have in the last couple of sessions, but feel free to start tasting the wines at any point. Enjoy them at your leisure. And of course, uh, I do have the chat function up. If there's any questions that I see, um, please ask as we go in certainly of, of the winemakers. We'll also have a little uh, session at the end of the seminar that we can uh, that we can use for uh, answering any questions. But Please feel free to unmute and uh, ask the question if you if you have one at a particular time. Um, in terms of sustainability around the world, I think it's you know as I as I go through these resources and I'm and I'm looking into some of the the materials as we're 
um, preparing for some of these things. It's really interesting. I feel like you know humanity is kind of off the back end when it comes to sustainability in so many ways with with food resources and things that that we really need to be focusing on. It's kind of like we're running out of resources and time um, in a way that's going to be problematic if we don't make changes here pretty quickly. Um, when you think of you know 9.3 billion inhabitants by year 2050, um, it's not surpri it's surprising to me that we don't have more focus on this resource problem already. I mean, water is going to be a huge issue uh, in the next 10 years uh, without some sort of change or some sort of plan. Uh, we're facing global warming, water requirements for farming is just gonna lead to uh, a shortage in so many regions. So it's really, really important that we uh, that we make some of these adjustments now. Uh, in addition to that, you think of like topsoil and plant nutrition uh, requirements. If these things are permanently damaged, it's gonna take you know hundreds of years to recover if uh, if we don't have a plan in place. Biodiversity needs to happen now, uh, reducing some of these areas of monoculture um, in, in ma making you know this farming transition essential for uh, for plant health and in development to get back to where we need to be. So um, you know I think the you know in order to maintain ag agriculture and food sources at a certain rate or level is going to require responsible use of these resources in order to not deplete them uh, permanently and this also includes economic factors and social things that we uh, need to take into consideration which is why i love this whole uh, sustainability program that the wines of chile has established because it really encompasses a lot of the things that we uh, really need to take into consideration so as we look back on some of the things that we've learned over the past couple of months with these virtual seminars uh, you know, we're, we're talking about establishing a culture for sustainability being such a critical thing. Uh, focus on specific resources based on your region. Some people, it's more important to focus on wa water. For others, it's more uh, community right away. Other people, it's looking at some of the energy resources. So it's really been interesting to talk to each one of these producers uh, or winemakers and try to figure out what is primarily, you know, you know, of concern for them at this moment. Um, certainly the intelligent use of energy is essential for all of these people, reducing carbon footprint to, to preserve our atmosphere. And then, you know, we talk about what is best for Chile versus, you know, the remainder of the world and learning from these producers and the farmers uh, from each of these regions and what's been great for, for them with this sustainability program and how some of the, uh, the, the wine regions of other areas can learn from this. Uh, we were talking a lot about the circle of, of sustainability and establishing this sense um, you know, of re responsibility beyond just the producer. So taking into consideration importers, distributors, consumers to really complete that whole process. When a product leaves Chile, you know, it's, it, it, you know, the, the responsibility ends up being on us as wine professionals and people in you know, the consumer side of things to make sure that we're recycling the materials, getting things back to where they need to be and in, uh, in completing that circle. So, um, you know, it's a powerful question to ask yourself. You know, I was recently asked, you know, what do I do in my own store? What what do I do to make sure that that, that we are operating um, sustainably? And I think it it that question makes you think and hopefully act. Um, so, you know, I think uh, responsibility within our industry is something that we really need to focus on as sommeliers and beverage professionals, because um, we often think of wine in terms of, of how does it taste, what's organic or biodynamic. And I think one of the things that I've learned and really it's it's been a, an eye-opening experience is the sustainability piece really, you know, it's the mitigation and reduction of wastefulness in winemaking, but it also takes into consideration so many more things outside of that community, tourism, uh, lots, you know, in addition to just viticulture and winery experiences. Um, I think it's really a, a top-notch program here. So very good stuff. We want our wine to taste good, but we also want to make sure that our global resource preservation is is in place and uh, moving in the direction of, of going up and not sliding downhill. So um, just a quick overview of some of the things that we've talked about uh, uh, with respect to Chile. Um, some of the some of the regions that we've ex explored recently, I mean, extend all the way, you know, the influences of Chile, obviously we have the Atacama Desert in the north, Andes to the east, the coastal range near the coastline there, uh, the Pacific Ocean with the Humboldt current um, coming off the uh, the west there, um, adding to the uh, the cool climate of some of these zones, a couple of wines that we will be tasting today are uh, a byproduct of that. Certainly uh, Antarctica in the south, um, we have natural barriers that create such a, an amazing growing region um, for the wines of Chile. And, you know, this is uh, a dry area, free of pests, remains, you know, unaffected by uh, phylloxera, which is still amazing 
uh, to this day, which is really, really awesome. Uh, certainly the you know wine capital or the sit capital city of Santiago, a lot of the wine regions originally starting from there. And uh, in pre previous seminars, we've addressed this whole surge past that area into uh, the north and the south. So areas like Elqui and Maule and Itata and Bio Bio and Mayeco. Um, these are all areas that you know have have had viticultural influence for many years, but have just been rediscovered uh, recently. So it's not just value wines of what's happening in Chile any longer. I think you know the last ten years, these efforts have put sustainability and taking care of the environment. Uh, to become an, a critically important focus for the, the the producers of Chile. So, you know, when we look at our next generation of these producers, um, we're going to see more exploration in the regions of North and South, uh, exploring just beyond the Bordeaux influence, working with uh, not only indigenous varieties, but some different varieties that might might not be Bordeaux influenced varieties. Uh, so these newer grapes and styles, lower alcohol, fresher styles, earlier harvest, uh, and some of the production techniques are changing as well as people understand the the viticulture and what they're what they're dealing with better. Um, this whole leadership of sustainability and organic production, um, I think, has the opportunity to really influence many places around the globe. Um, I love the idea of all this uh, this direction of people dry farming and trying to either you know certainly focusing on drip irrigation, but but beyond that, doing things at a high level with dry farming, I think, is awesome. And then, you know, as we move along, producers are learning and adjusting to the climate changes, just like they are all around the world. And that's really an important thing. So it kind of funnels us down in, into this whole code of sustainability, which Chile established in 2010. Um, and they are certainly, uh, as a country, one of the most extensive programs with over 80 wineries certified at this point, uh, representing over 90% of its wine exports, which is amazing. Um, these bottles can be identified with the uh, the label on the uh, on the back of the the bottle uh, if you're looking for it on the shelf or as you pull it out of your uh, your wine cellar and that is uh, that seal is what uh, you know signifies certified sustainable wine of Chile. I think it's uh, a great tool for people to have. And this uh, certification you know started with 276 requirements uh, with another 70 that were added for tourism recently, uh, which is a total of 346 requirements that a producer has to go through uh, to make sure that they are part of this program. So um, it's not, not an easy little thing. When you break it into the standards, um, there are four sections uh, covering farming practices, work in the winery, which includes bottling and packaging, social responsibility, uh, that includes you know workers in the surrounding communities, and then the most recent addition has been tourism. Um, as mentioned in prior uh, seminars, and just a, a main focus for Chile, two two huge concerns of sustainability are responsible use of water and just being a, an arid area, and then uh, producers also uh, focusing on. Uh, packaging and some of the issues with with export because so, so much of their production is exported. So something to consider. As we get into the green area, we're looking at the uh, at the slide here. We're looking at uh, this is you know land owned by the company or long term suppliers. This is focus on the vineyard. Uh, the certification encompasses you know su sustainable soil management, disease and weed, con weed control, judicious application of fertilizers and other chemicals, and responsible use of water. So a couple of the requirements that you might see in this would include vineyard a vineyard management plan, uh, reduction in rotation of herbicides, management plan of pests and disease. Uh, first, considering the preventative measures, and then the second uh, being, you know, ch chemical control management plan to prevent contamination of soil, water resources, homes, conservation areas, uh, a plan for safety materials and equipment for workers, biodiversity and development within the vineyard, and uh, sustainability. Excuse me, sustainable use of water and energy. And finally, you know, this is got, you know all connected to you know plans for reduction of greenhouse gases. There, when you look at the uh, the red there. Uh, we're looking at some of the winery and winemaking processes, uh, which will take into consideration waste reduction, recycling, uh, energy use, industrial water management, contamination prevention, um, reduction of emissions and waste. Uh, many of these things likely include a waste management plan, a plan for opportunities with energy related improvements, sustainable water and energy use, water saving protocols, uh, safety materials or safety equipment for workers. Uh, diagnostic for environmental impacts and a plan of action, and then of course hazardous waste storage, if any. Um, when we move on to the orange area, uh, we get into areas that highlight social responsibility. So uh, many of these, you know, 
are connected to establishing some sort of a code of ethics for business operation. And that might include a special control to prohibit the use of child labor or forced labor, occupational health and safety programs, uh, evaluation of community impacts and participating in the community care, promotion of responsible wine consumption, and a policy for non-discrimination and human rights. Um, the last bit that was most recently uh, added was the purple area, which is tourism. We often think of that as just a secondary uh, part of what we're doing here, but wineries have uh, adopted a sustainable policy for all tourism services. And that includes water and energy use, uh, waste management plan that takes into consideration food waste from restaurant operations, education for clients and workers about moderate or responsible wine consumption, uh, programs of action for health and occupational safety, working conditions, work environment and safety, and of course, non-discrimination policies for, for that part, part as well. So this whole goal is, you know, I mean, there's so many of the, the, the wineries that have already jumped in here, but there is still, um, you know, a plan to, to get some of the smaller wineries and additional boutique producers on board with this whole program. And, you know, part of that is connected with sustainable, the sustainable 365 campaign. And that is also, you know, moving all the way through the program into uh, to, to the industry, Solonais, uh, consumers and everybody beyond. So um, education awareness among producers and beyond is going to help us get to that goal. Um, and Chile, Chile has been such a leader in the uh with all the you know everything that they're doing with this whole um code of sustainability i think it's really really you know well thought out and put together and i hope that a lot of other wineries uh, uh, around the world take note and start to imp implement some of that um philosophy and life you know just into their uh, you know daily life there so um let's jump into some wines here i think uh we've gone through uh, the process of just kind of highlighting some of the general sustainability. And uh, I think we can use the rest of the time to focus on tasting some of these delicious wines and speaking to some of our winery representatives here. So this is a, a, a wine from uh, the 2019 vintage, Matetic EQ Coastal Sauvignon Blanc from Casablanca Valley. And this is a, a nice 13.5% alcohol, refreshing, beautiful Coastal Sauvignon Blanc um, that is organic and biodynamically produced. The, uh, this was a cool kind of cloudy summer harvest started on uh, March uh, excuse me March 11th, uh, which was the first day of the biodynamic calendar. It ended up being a great year for Sauvignon Blanc, as is uh, represented in my glass. It smells delicious. Um, this is a wine source from a uh, from the, the Hermoso Vineyard, just 12 mi uh, kilometers off of the uh, Pacific Ocean, and um, soils are granitic and yields are about 8.5 tons per hectare. Um, after harvest, there's about a 12 hour uh, cold maceration. Part of the wine goes into stainless steel for four months on the lees and the other part is fermented either in concrete eggs or uh, French oak barrels uh, ranging from uh, 228 liter to 400 liter. Um, looks like somebody's also mentioned that these wines are 100% vegan. I like it. Um, I love it. The uh, In terms of some of the sustainability things that uh, this winery focuses on um, in the environment, we're looking at uh, vineyard. They do a lot of the biological corridors for native vegetation and promoting animal life. Um, water, they have their own wetland biological treatment plant using 100% of the water using you know, that is reused for, uh, for vegetable production, uh, recycling, they use a lot of vermiculture for uh, the breakdown of vegetable waste. Energy, they have passive architecture design that allows for natural temperature control in the winery as well as gravity flow. Um, and then packaging, they like to, uh, to source a lot of their products from cert certified sustainable companies in the area. Um, they're big on community with the majority of the team residing nearby. Uh, they part participate in a lot of social and educational collaborations, work together with local community and pr promote uh, activities. And if you look it down, the list of some of the certifications they have EcoCert, Demeter, Vegan, as uh, that was just brought to my attention, uh, Wines of Chile uh, Sustainability Certification, and of course, they have a, a sustainable pol policy of their own. Uh, Julio Bastes, this is uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us, the winemaker here at the, uh, the winery. Um, thanks for being with us today. How are you, everybody? It's a pleasure to be here <laughs> with you guys. Explain in all these beautiful elements of uh, sustainability, organic and biodynamic farming that we, it's so, so in our, in our culture, in our philosophy, since the beginning of the project in, in 1999. So all, all, the, all what you say before, it's 
uh, it's a uh, it is a long commitment that we develop from the from the owners, from the Madetic family to the technical to the workers, all the technical staff also. And it had been on a, on a really amazing adventure all of these years, uh, developing our our own system, our own recipe for for sustainability, for organic, and for biodynamic farming. Mm -hmm. I love it. So yeah, you you are certified eco eco cert for organic farming and Demeter with biodynamic practices, but the sustainable certification encompasses more than that. What are your priorities beyond focus with organic or biodynamic commitments? Well, our priorities are always uh, being, uh, uh, you know, eco friendly with all the system that we done here. But as you say, you know, being in the sustainability code help us and teach us how we can improve, how we can go further than, than just in the social side uh, with, the, with our workers, with our communities, in, with, with the communities that are surrounding us. So our focus in all of these years uh, has been um, really precise in the way that we farm taking care of the environment, taking care of the people, taking care of the product at the end, because at the end, organically and biodynamically farming, it's giving us the possibility to catch the sense of the place, but in the other side, permit us to be really, uh, to really, to be really aware of the, of the, our natural resources, our environment, our workers. So at the end, it's given us one more, more tools to be, to be successful in the way that we want to produce fruit and wine. So that's that's a really important matter for us, uh, being part of the of the sustainability goal and develop all the organic and dynamic techniques that we we done since the beginning. Yeah, it seems like it takes just the focus of what you were doing initially with farming and it just you know builds a little bit wider of a scope yeah, for it's the growing wine and growing. practices. Yeah, it's growing and growing because at the beginning, all the focus is really technical at the beginning, just the pre-planting decisions, all the terroir, all the irrigation, all the all the decisions to, in terms of taking care of the natural surroundings and the natural corridors, all the natural flora. That's the idea is the opposite to the ideas at the end, the idea at the end is just to build an uh, agroecosystem, yeah, being part of the nature, not outside of the of the system. So at the end, it is a learning process. You you done all the technical decisions, and then you can you know being aware of the natural flora, all the cover crops that you can use, all the bene beneficial in, uh, beneficial plants and animals that you can put in the in the agro ecosystem. At the end, it's just to try to imitate nature in a really humble way, and and all the benefits in the social part also is coming together. For example. We can provide to our work is a, uh, it is a really healthy and and clean environment to work to develop because we don't spray any kind of chemical things here no weed killers no pesticides anything so at the end our workers can develop uh, the, the 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 own tasks that they need to do in a healthy and clean environment so in the social part is quite important also we can we can bring our customers and eat the fruit without any 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 fright to get you know some some something weird in the fruit at the end. It's really only healthy and clean fruit and you know with high quality at the end for, for beautiful wines at the end. Yeah, it's it's clear that you guys are very focused on your vineyards, your winery, your community. Um, another question I have is is with 80% of the wines of Chile being exported, packaging, logistics, yeah. transport is obviously a primary discussion for producers. In your opinion, what needs to happen to reduce Carbon footprint in packaging for transport in, in with with regard to transportation. It is a really good question because you know in our case, uh, fifty percent of the of the of the sales are in the our local market, and right now in, in in our country we are developing a new law of recycling, and we must take care of at least some some big part of the of the of the waste of the of the glasses, cardboards, and all the products that we put on the market. So. It is a new thing. It's really exciting about that, and uh, we are doing a really good job as a country to take care of all the all the ways that we create as an industry. So, at the beginning, you must take care of the at least, if I remember properly, probably more than ten percent of the waste, and then 
it can be going up in, in the next years. And the other 50% that the, uh, we have uh, as exports, uh, it's really difficult to say to have a, a one policy because it depends a lot of the market. Uh, if there is, a, for example, states and uh, some parts of uh, Europe are really taking care of all of this, you know, in terms of uh, taking care of, uh, of the, to reduce your, your carbon uh, footprint. And uh, what we can do, we are using less weight in the glass. You know, we are using the eco glass in all the products that we can we can have, and we are trying to use recycling products like cardboards or pallets. But in in, a, in another market, some like in Asia, it's the opposite. Sometimes they are looking for a really heavy heavy bottles and uh, really beautiful packaging, and it, it depends on the market. But at the end, from our point of view. We are using all the recycling materials like cardboards and, and you know, a light a weight a glass at the end. That, that is a one step to do and we can go, of course, more. And, uh, but I think it's a, good, it's a good way to do it. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge because you can do so many, so many things, you know, well at the winery and within the country of Chile. But when you're exporting to all these places around the world, you're kind of, you know, you're at the mercy of, of what people are doing in those different communities. So, you know, that's where it becomes more of a global requirement that people need to, you know, take care of recycling and making sure that they close that yeah. circle. We, we, we learned a lot in the last, I don't know, eight years with the, with the sustainability goal. And um, we, we, we get some experience uh, with uh, Scandinavia countries uh, like Sweden or Norway or Denmark. Because they are they are really focused on, 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 on these issues, and it's important to, to to develop a policy for being in those markets. It's mandatory at the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. The uh, this this nineteen Sauvignon Blanc, by the way, is absolutely beautiful. This is the first time I've actually tasted this wine, and I'm very yeah. very excited about it. It uh, it captures some of the you know. The, the bright, you know, energetic essence of Sauvignon Blanc. It's got a little of that briny sea, seashell character to it, but really, really pretty. The herb notes are very focused. It's, you know, a hint yeah, of that tart, yeah. lemon and passion fruit. It's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, catch the sense of the place, the sense of the coastal range of Chile, where we are based, looking to the, to the Pacific. And uh, we put focus a lot in in in, in work with the with the leaves, with the texture in this wine. So it's uh, it's really food friendly. Um, and the idea of uh, doing the fermentation in different uh, vessels, it is just to to encourage you know the differences of each block at the end. So in the barrel fermentation, we want to catch the the ripeness, the sweet aromas of the sauvignon blanc more in the deal side. And in the concrete eggs, we, we play a lot with the fine solids to, to add more texture at, into the wine. So it's a, it is a really beautiful sodium blank uh, just to drink at this time of the, in, in the year in, in the US. It's in perfect for me. It's, it's ju just about lunchtime, and I think it's, it's delicious. I love it. <laughs> it is, you know, for awesome. a ceviche, with a ceviche, <laughs> with raw fish, with sushi, with, with different meals, it's beautiful. It's really good. I bet it's outstanding. Fantastic. Julio, yeah. thank you so much for uh, for taking the time with us today. We'll, um, we'll, I do uh, want to uh, just mention, uh, you know, as I've, as I've mentioned in some of the previous um, closing statements here, you know, I think sustainability is really a collaborative project that requires uh, participation from the workers, suppliers, customers, shareholders, all to make, the, uh, make a difference for the planet. Um, and I think we all do need to be proactive uh, working now to establish these sustainable practices in, in all areas of the industry. So we actually have an industry in the years to come. Um, it, it's really, really impressive to see what Chile has done to be at the forefront of the industry and one of the global leaders for sustainable, sustainability and wine you know, production. You know, as, as professionals, I think it's, you know, it's always important for us that, that wines taste good. Um, but we as, as industry professionals need to consider supporting these producers, regions and countries that, uh, that take sustainability seriously. So um, it has been an absolute pleasure to, to guide you guys through some of these tastings and be involved with these wonderful producers. And thank you all for, uh, you know, the Colangelo partners and uh, all the ladies that, that helped with making all the 
resources available to all of us and for uh you know to julio for making this this all possible so thank you guys very much <laughs>